but not exactly the cold start I was about to get on the car, unfortunately. Seems like if my car goes three or four days without being driven, it dies. So luckily, I have this really cool battery backpack uh, jump starter. So unfortunately, I'm gonna jump start the car real quick and then we can get on with today's video. So now we're gonna go ahead and start the video. In today's video, we are doing the last bit of maintenance that I've been really wanting to do on the GTR. So real quick, we're gonna do an oil change and then somewhat of a power steering flush. Not a complete flush, pulling every single bit of the oil out of it, but we're gonna pretty much cycle through all of it to put new stuff in. And then a basic engine oil change just to get the car up in tip top shape. If you guys remember in a previous video, we had the transmission front and rear differential service. So once this is done, the car's pretty much done with normal maintenance and it's really ready to go to hit some uh, fun roads and stuff like that. So I definitely need to plan a fun mountain road trip. But that is the car in the position ready to go. Let's start working. All right, so that is the one under tray we need to take out to do this oil change. As you can see, we now have the sway bar that you can see, and then we have the oil filter, and then the oil drain plug uh, right there. So onto the drain plug, which is a 14 millimeter, and since I don't have a breaker bar, I'm just gonna use a extra handle, get a little bit more leverage out of this. So while the oil pan is dripping, I'm gonna take the oil filter off. I don't have a one inch, so I'm just gonna use channel locks. So that should get this filter off with no issue. All right, so everything is draining now. Now, as much as getting your hands dirty, working on your own car is something we like, I actually did all of that without getting any oil on my hands, which is kind of cool. Normally we wear gloves just in case, but I actually was able to do that without making a single bit of a mess. So I'm just gonna let that drain for a little bit. Later in today's video, I'm gonna talk about what it actually costs to maintain this car. As a mini spoiler alert, it really doesn't cost much to maintain this at all. Uh, we'll go over the pricing in just a second, but we're gonna get a few things done and then go over that. So to help make it drain a little bit better, I've gone ahead and lowered this side of the car. That way where the actual drain plug is, it's actually angled down to have more oil come out just so I make sure I get every single bit out. And with the other side lifted way up, you can see just the degree of angle we have on the car. But that is really gonna do a great job emptying this entire drain pan. That's the first time I've ever drained the oil to where I've lifted up the one side to make every single bit of it come out. So this should be the most thorough oil change I've done. Uh, real quick, here's what we got. So we have 0W40, uh, full synthetic oil for the car. Luckily, from my last oil change, I had another one laying around. This car takes five and one quarter quarts of oil. So this one obviously was my sixth quart from my last oil change. I only used a quarter of it, so we use another quarter. So this bottle is very useful and should last me three more oil changes. And then the actual five quart I bought, I got this on sale. I'll go over the pricing in a second because it was way cheaper to do it this time than the first time and then my Canon oil filter So we're gonna go ahead and put this back on drain plug back in and then fill it up go ahead and put five quarts of oil in right now. I know it will take about a quarter quart more, but since I think more oil came out this time than other oil changes, I'll probably put it back on level ground, start it up, let it run for a little bit, check it, put a quarter quart in more, and then do that again just to confirm that it's got the correct amount of oil in it. So the car is back on flat ground now. The car's perfectly level. Five quarts are in. Hopefully we're gonna start it up real quick just to get some oil cycling through. Then we'll check the level, add a little bit, and then move on to power steering. Yes. Straighten out the wheel a little bit. Well, it's saying engine oil is okay, but we'll still double check everything. All right, so we are not quite at the halfway mark. I'm gonna go ahead and put a quarter quart in. And 
and that is about half quart now. So the oil change is all done now. I ended up putting a half a core more, so I definitely drained more oil out than previous oil changes. So that one will be good for one more oil change and then we're good. So now before I do the power steering, because I'm waiting on one more bottle to get here, I'm gonna go over the maintenance cost that I've had to spend to own this car. I've had this now for about 11, 12,000 miles, a little over a year and a half. So this will be the third oil change that I've done. Roughly they cost about $70 each. However, today's oil change only cost me like 30 something dollars. The oil was actually on sale when I bought the oil filter with it. So this five quart was actually only $24. It's full synthetic, of course, the exact stuff you should be putting in this car. There was a discount of $17 at Advanced Auto. And then the oil filter was $9.74. It was discounted $7.25. So I saved about $25 on this oil change just because they happen to be running a sale. Now with this car, I changed the oil every 5,000 miles or once a year. It is about nine months since I changed the oil last time. It was October, the last oil change, and that was at 29,500 miles. So I'm about right due for the next oil change. So once a year to spend then maybe 30, 40 bucks on the actual oil change. That's really nothing to worry about as far as maintenance costs. So I had the transmission and the differential change. That was $300 worth of oil. That you only have to do every 35,000 miles. I probably will never have to do that again since I doubt I will have this car at 60,000 miles. And that is the only bit of actual maintenance I've ever had to do to this car. So we're talking $500 worth of maintenance on a GTR to own this for a year and a half. Now, as far as bigger ticket items, tires. So I did have to do new tires on it. That was $1,500 with the actual Michelin tires as well as Mountain Balance. I believe those tires maybe last like 15 to 20,000 miles depending on how you're gonna drive. You can opt for cheaper ones, but as you guys know, for those of you who are subscribers to the channel, when you skimp out on tires, the car gets completely ruined. So don't waste your time doing that. Just stick with the good tires. Then the only other maintenance thing that I haven't had to do just yet, which probably will happen sometime next year, brakes. Now brakes are ridiculously expensive for this car. I think I might be able to get away with new pads and rotors sometime next year for maybe $2,000. So that's a little bit pricey for brakes. I'm gonna figure out something better than OEM because OEM is like $7,000. Um, and all this stuff, do not waste your time going to Nissan. The prices that the actual dealership charges are astronomically more. Even just the oil for the transmission and differential, those were 20 to 30 bucks a quart. From Nissan, they're like $80 a quart. So if you want to own a GTR and not below the bank on maintenance, do not go to Nissan. Just go to a nice performance shop or do it yourself. Very easy, you know, $35 oil change for today. And then uh, power steering fluid I did not talk about. That is $9.60 a bottle. I have two bottles I'll be putting in the car. I'm waiting on the other one to get here because I only picked up one. But that's kind of the cost of maintenance maintaining the GTR, it's literally no different than a normal car. It's funny because before I bought this, so many people said, you know, you might be able to afford the car, but you're never gonna be able to afford the maintenance on it. It is no different to maintain than my 370Z or Genesis Coupe. It's literally no different than a normal car. So that's all the maintenance costs I have encountered with owning this car. It has been a bulletproof reliable car. Let me knock on wood just in case because, or that's plastic. All right, knock on wood, the car has been perfectly reliable. I don't wanna spend 15 grand on another transmission. That, that would not be fun at all. But these things have been very reliable. A lot of people ask me what years to buy. I'm not a perfect expert on GTR knowledge, but from what I know, 2014, they did upgrade the transmission and suspension. My car is a 2014 model year. So as far as I know, this transmission is very well capable to handle full bolt-ons and E85, uh, roughly 650 at the wheels it can handle. My car should be around 600 at the wheels, full bolt-ons and 93 octane. So I still have more room in the transmission to add a little bit more power to it. With that said, um, this car, uh, 2014 roughly, you're gonna be looking around $65,000 in today's market. I spent 67 on this a year and a half ago. It's still worth about the same, which is nice. The resale value of these cars is fantastic. Every year they're more expensive, which makes the used ones pretty much hold their price. But around the $45,000 mark, you can get into a 2009 or a 2010, which for that kind of money to get a supercar is pretty insane. I haven't really heard any horror stories about reliability or issues with them. I just know that the transmission isn't as strong. So I don't think you'll have an issue if you just do like a stage two setup, bigger intakes and a mid pipe and just a basic tune. I think if you go full bolt-ons and stuff like that, you might run into some issues with maybe something happening with the transmission. But as far as my recommendation, for buying a used GTR. I don't see any crazy red flags. Just go with what your budget allows. If you're in the you know, under $50,000 mark, find a good one that has good history, clean Carfax, stuff like that. Uh, just look for a car that's in really good condition and do a pre-purchase inspection. Have either a Nissan dealership or an actual performance shop do a full inspection just to make sure everything's in tip-top shape. So overall, buying a GTR, owning a GTR, I think it's a pretty good vehicle to pick up. You're not going to be blowing money on maintenance. Reliability is pretty good. Oil change is easier than my 370Z was, so it's a pretty awesome car to own and it's really not hard to maintain. 
So the oil change has all been complete now. The under tray is on. Everything looks in tip-top shape. Now we're moving on to power steering. Now I have never actually done power steering change before. I've never had to do it. It's not something you have to do like every year or anything like that. I just figure it's only 10 bucks a bottle. Might as well cycle two brand new bottles through the system just to clean it up. I'll probably never have to do it again on this car. So here it is, just the genuine Nissan brand. Basically all we're gonna do is start up the engine and then take the cap off of the power steering reservoir. And then in this fluid, I'm going to take this turkey baster, which I bought this at Walmart for a whopping $2. Basically use this and suck out the power steering fluid. And as you can see, it's actually really not in bad condition. It's not like brand new looking. It still has a nice red tint, which is a good sign. But I'm going to suck out as much power steering fluid from the reservoir, pour it into this bottle, and then put the new bottle into here until it fills up back to the same level. And then we're going to go inside, turn the wheels all the way one way and then all the way the other way. That will cycle through everything in here. It'll push this down into one hose. And then from the other hose that's connecting to this, it'll push the old fluid back into it. And we're just going to cycle it through until I run out. So I did a few more cycles. Now what I'm gonna do is clean the actual cap up a little bit and we're gonna go ahead and put it back in. I cycled it all. So now I'll do one last cycle with everything on like that. Just turn it a little bit. All right, so I've cycled through the two bottles. It's definitely looking very red as we come out now. So it might be a little hard to see with the sunlight. Kind of looks a little brownish red, but the later ones that I pull out are definitely looking a little bit more on the red side. So next up, we're gonna see if I need to pull a little bit out at all. So cold is probably not cold anymore, but it's not all the way at the top where hot is either. So I'm just gonna worry about topping this off. If I need to put a little bit more in, I can use a little bit more of this. So I'm now gonna take the car for just a quick spin around the neighborhood. Turn the steering wheel quite a bit just to feel everything out. But that is the new oil change all done. And then power steering fluid as well. First time doing a power steering flush like that. Uh, pretty basic to do, I will say. And in later videos, I'll talk about if I notice anything in the steering that's weird or better or worse or anything like that. As of now, just driving one-handed like this. Um, I mean, it feels tight and heavy. I guess that's good. I will check the fluid level once it cools off. But everything like that feels pretty normal. And uh, I think that's about going to wrap up today's video showing you kind of what it costs to actually maintain this car. In all honesty, as far as my experience goes, it is nothing special to maintain. It is nothing out of the ordinary to own, which is an amazing thing because it's a fun car to drive. It destroys Lamborghinis and Ferraris in a straight line all day long. And it really is a blast of a car, especially with some modifications. And then maintaining it is so easy. You can do it yourself. It's nothing crazy, which is all the more reason why I love having a GTR. It's just such a fun car and very well-rounded, I would say. You can do quite a bit with it. But anyway, guys, that is going to wrap up today's video. Hope you enjoyed it. Give it a huge thumbs up. Don't forget to check out our new merchandise, all linked in the description below. Hit that subscribe button as well, and we'll see you guys next video.